Hello everyone. Our topic tonight today is Let Freedom Ring, America in Prophecy. So far, we have studied the prophecies of concerning empire's past and how history testifies to the accuracy of their fulfillment. But what about the United States of America? Is there any prophecy in the Bible about this country? Indeed, there is. The, this vibrant, dynamic nation with all the significant developments in religious affairs has not been left out of Bible prophecy. 14 centuries before Columbus discovered this country, a Bible prophet named John foretold America's unique rise to power. The time would come to power, its type of government and its influence in world affairs. The Bible does not speak of every country in this world by the name, but he has clearly revealed the truth about nations that have had direct impact on God's people and the work of the gospel. There is no doubt that our loving God has blessed America. Scenic, scenic wonders that have brought visitors from around the world, beautiful beaches, breathtaking rock formations, fertile valleys, spectacular waterfalls, and towering mountain ranges, and exquisite winter beauty. Actually, the pilgrims, who are a group of people from Europe in the 1600s, were profoundly committed to do God's will, and were searching for a place where they could live in peace and freedom. They, like many others before it, had suffered a ruthless oppression and persecution in their homes in Europe. The old world. Persecution that originated as a way to quench the Protestant reformations. The Spanish Inquisition, the massacre of the Huguenots, the slaughter of the Waldenses, the burnings of the stake, the hangings, the whippings, and the imprisonments. All this history was still fresh in their minds. In virtually all the countries of Europe, whether under Catholic or Protestant rulers, religious freedom was not allowed. Only the established churches could legally operate. Hunted, persecuted, and imprisoned, imprisoned they could discern in future no better days. And many yielded to the conviction for that such a world as would serve God according to the dictates of their conscience. England was as ceasing forever to be a habitable place, according to History of New England, chapter 3, paragraph 42. And when God's hand seemed pointing them across the sea to a land where they might found themselves a state and leave to their children the precious heritage of religious liberty, they went forward without shrinking in the path of providence. 102 pilgrims aboard the Mayflower ship endured 64 excruciating days to cross the Atlantic Ocean. Finally, on November 9, 1620, they arrived on the shores of the New World. Falling on their knees, they thanked God for a safe journey and for a new home. Soon, the good news spread throughout the old world of the land where everyone might enjoy the fruit of their own labor and obey the convictions of their own conscience. Thousands flocked to the shores of the New World. By 1775, the struggle of the colonists for independence raged, and on the evening of July 4, 1776, a declaration of independence was confirmed. The revered document penned by Thomas Jefferson declared, We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and that they are endowed with their creator with certain inalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Thirteen years after the Declaration of Independence was signed in 1789, the Constitution that was voted by nine of the 13 states went into effect. Then two years later, in 1791, the first 10 amendments to the Constitution were ratified and are known as the Bill of Rights. It says, Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the exercise, the free exercise thereof. This nation, America, was established without the power of kingly authority. 
and without a state church. The United States founding fathers were determined that America would enjoy the benefits of two great principles, civil liberty and religious freedom. Church and state were to be forever separated. America was destined to be a great land. The struggling isolated colonies grew into a confederation of powerful states and the world was amazed at the peace and prosperity of the country without a king or pope. In several instances, we see God's love clearly demonstrated in the development of this country, America, United States. God does not force people to follow him. He shows again and again that he loves everyone and encourages us to choose his wonderful ways. Satan, on the other hand, has always relied upon force and coercion. Let us turn to Revelation 13 and read John's fascinating description of history of USA. In this chapter, we will see two beasts. From one, from our previous lessons, we understand that this in Bible prophecy refers to a kingdom or country. The characteristics of the first beast rising up out of the sea are the same as the little horn power in Daniel 7. In our last study, we learned that this undeniably points to the Roman Catholic Church state, which ruthlessly dominated the world for 13, nearly 13 centuries, 538 AD to 1798 AD. Now, notice the next part of John's vision. The aged prophet saw a most interesting sight, Revelation 13, 11. Then I saw another beast coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. There was something different about this nation. The other beasts arose out of the sea or populated areas of the world. This nation came up out of the earth or wilderness area. It would also arise around the time of the completion of the 42 months of persecution, which ended in 1798. It is significant that this land like beast had no crowns on its horns as the other beasts preceding it. In other words, it would be a nation without a king, a nation that does not force religion upon its citizens. Think for a moment. What young, peace-loving nation was growing in power and prominence in a wilderness area of the world in 1798? Only one nation matches that prophetic distinction, the United States of America. And in just two centuries, it has become one of the most powerful nations on earth. After describing the beautiful characteristics of this superpower, Revelation 13.11 shocks us with language that indicates this of this country's radical transformation. It says that it spoke like a dragon, Revelation 13.11. How do countries speak? through the relig legislative enactments or laws. The Bible here clearly describes that a change will take place in the government of this country. In fact, it is already taking place. For many, it is already speaking like a dragon. And throughout history, whenever and wherever the dragon voice has been heard, there has been a persecution. This amazing prophecy continues in Revelation 13, 12. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast, beast whose deadly wound was healed. Unbelievably, as it may seem, the persecuting character of the first beast or papal room is to be duplicated by this lamb-like beast turned dragon or the United States. The prophecy states that this lamb-like beast will cause them that dwell on the earth to worship the first beast or papal Rome. One might think that such a thing could never happen to the United States of America. Its Declaration of Independence, Constitution, and Bill of Rights protect its citizens from infringement of their liberties. Together, they guarantee the separation of church and state. Any infringement of the such liberties would be directly contrary to the principles of its government. The only way this could happen, ever happen, would be if the principle of religious liberty are effaced. However strange might it seem, it has been happening for several decades. 
in many instances, the United States Constitution, Constitution had been abandoned or simply ignored. Let's review the characteristics that clearly show that the United States of America is the beast referred to in Revelation 13, 11 to 18. It would come out of the beast, uh, out of the wilderness, not out of the populated area of the world. Number two, it would rise to prominence just as the leopard-like beast of Revelation 13 was receiving its deadly wound. In 1798, it would be a democratic world power, no crowns. Therefore, at first, it would be like a peaceful land. Number five, it would become a world power that would lead the rest of the world to worship the leopard-like beast and receive its mark. Continuing the prophecy concerning United States, we read in Revelation 13, 13, he performs great signs so that he even makes fire comes down, come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast, to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. Wait a minute. You might say, what is this image to the beast spoken of in the text? That's a good question. To make an image or likeness of something, we have to copy it. In other words, for the United States government to copy the aims and policies of papal Rome, it would have to tear down the wall of separation between church and state. Religious power would have to so control our government that, or their government that she should make and enforce religious laws. Let's remember, what the Catholic Church said nearly 100 years ago. Sunday is our mark of authority. The church is above the Bible. That's what they said. And this transference of Sabbath observance is proof of that fact. Catholic record, September 1, 1923. That's what they said. Here we find that the papacy claims that its mark of authority is in religious matters is its ability to change the law of God. Instituting Sunday as a day of worship in direct violation of God's command to keep the seventh day as a holy day. Just as keeping of Sabbath is a sign of worship and allegiance to God, observance of Sunday is a sign of giving homage or worship to the papacy. Notice their claim. The observance of Sunday by the Protestants is a homage they pay in spite of themselves to the authority of the Catholic Church. Plain talk about the Protestantism of today, page 213. Listen to this statement from St. Catherine Catholic Church, Sentinel, May 21, 1995. It said, perhaps the boldest thing, the most revolutionary change that the Church ever did happened in the first century. The Holy Day, the Sabbath, was changed from Saturday to Sunday, not from any directions noted in the scriptures, but from the church's sense of its own power. Those who think that the scriptures should be the sole authority should logically become Seventh-day Adventists and keep Saturday holy. If, according to the symbols of Bible prophecy, the United States is to exercise all the power of papal Rome, cause the people of the world to worship the papacy and to make an image of the beast, it will legislate the observance of Sunday as a day of worship and cause the rest of the world to accept it. Bible prophecy makes it clear that this will happen. The worship of the beast or keeping of the day it claims as its mark will not always be a matter of voluntary choice. Religious legislation will be enacted that will compel people by threats of boycott and finally the penalty of death to worship the beast. Revelation 13, 15 says, He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, and the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He causes both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave to receive a mark on their right hand, on their foreheads, and that no one should buy and sell except the one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. That time is not far distant 
when everyone will be required to keep holy the first day of the week instead of the day God commanded our, us to keep. Norman Cousins, a political journalist, wrote this thought-provoking statement. The moment religious forces seek to control the government rather than influence it, they threaten the very society they protect. Liberty, March, April, 1933, page 26. Notice what has been happening during the last 30 to 40 years. Since 1988, the papacy has been hosted by the UN invitation, an annual meeting with major world religions in Assisi, Italy, to discuss religious unification and political issues. The UN, UN sees the Vatican as the holding leadership key to religious tolerance and unity to help bring world peace. Current issues, page 1. Revelation 13, 13 is correct. His deadly wound was healed and all the world marveled and followed the beast surely the deadly wound continues to be healed and even the scar is disappearing the rift between protestants and catholics is quickly shrinking controversies are receding at the such a pace that many theologians say that soon unity will be a reality in 2014, at a large gathering of Pentecostal ministers, Bishop Tony Palmer boldly proclaimed that the protest is over. And by the time of the 500th anniversary of the Protestant Reformation in 2017, nearly all of the major denominations have realigned themselves with Rome. It is interesting to notice that one religious writer, Ellen G. White, commenting on these prophecies over a hundred years ago, confidently stated, the Protestants of the United States will be first, foremost, in stretching their hands across the Gulf to grasp the hand of spiritualism. They will reach over the abyss to clasp hands with the Roman power. And under the influence of this threefold union, his country, the United States of America, will follow in the steps of Rome in trampling on the rights of conscience. The Great Controversy, page 588. Let's read in Revelation 13, 12 again. And he exercises all authority of the beast in his presence and causes earth, the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast who deadly, whose deadly wound was healed. This text reveals that the United States will lead all the other nations into paying homage to the papacy by ultimately honoring her day of worship. It is very difficult to believe that such radical depart departure from its government's principles of religious freedom would come about. But the Bible states that it will and it is. Many people will be deceived into believing that God is leading the movement to unite all religious observe and observe the day of worship established by the beast. They will believe that God is supporting the lamb-like beast and the religious political alliances because of all the miracles performed. Revelation 13, 14. He deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do. The only people do not deceived by the miracles will be those who refuse to worship the beast. Their names are written in the book of life, but they will be threatened and finally placed under a death decree. For as many as would not worship the beast of the image to be killed, and that decree will be made by the lamb-like beast speaking last as a dragon. Ellen G. White writes, When the leading churches of the United States uniting upon such points of doctrine are as held, are as are held by them in common, shall influence the state to enforce their decrees and to sustain their institutions. Then, Protestant America will have formed an image to Roman hierarchy and the infliction of civil penalties upon dissenters will inevitably result. The Great Controversy, page 445. Here, we see the issue to which the whole world is being brought. According to Bible prophecy, the United States 
will be the primary moving force, the agent for enacting legislation to cause everyone to worship the beast. The world will unite in a crusade against those who refuse to comply with the repressive religious or regulations. Civil penalties will be enforced. And finally, those refusing to, fall, to worship the beast will be declared to be deserving of death. But God's loving warning is clear in Revelation 14, verse 9. If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself will also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out in full strength into the cup of his indignation. This final warning to the inhabitants of the earth is heard along with God's loving call in Revelation 18 4. Come out of her, my people, lest you share in the her sins, and lest you receive of her plagues. Many honest people have been confused, have been confused. They have followed the beast unknowingly as they hear God's call to come out of Babylon, the false systems of worship. They step out and join the ranks of those who refuse to worship the beast or receive the plagues. The only way that we can escape these plagues is to rely 100% on the righteousness of Jesus Christ. There is no way we can withstand the forces of Satan in our own strength. There is no way we can save ourselves from what is coming. Notice what the Bible says in Revelation 14, 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. It is the faith of Jesus that enables us to keep his commandments. This is the story of a man named Milton Skustek who lived in Central Europe during the years of the Soviet Union when there was a great religious oppression. When the communists took over his country, he wanted to be free to worship on Sabbath. He wanted to be free to read his Bible. He wanted to continue to work as a minister. But the communists had other ideas. They were determined to turn all ministers into laborers. Milton knew that they wanted to send him as far away from his congregation as possible, far away to the coal mines. But he got an idea. He figured out a way that he might be able to stay close to his pastoral work in the city of Prague. There was one job in the city that nobody wanted. Nobody wanted to climb into those narrow, filthy culverts and clean them. Hundreds of feet under the city, Milton decided to go see the communist officials about this job. But first he got down on his knees and prayed, Jesus, he said, I want to worship you every Sabbath. Please help me to keep your law and to be honest and faithful to you. Milton was ushered in to see the local official. Milton said to her, I understand you want to ship me to the mines to work. Let me tell you something. My grandfather worked in the mines and my father worked in the mines and I'm willing to work in whatever mine you send. But I have a suggestion. You need someone to do the worst job you have. I know about it. It's climbing down into those sewers and I am willing to do it. Why don't you assign me to clean the sewer pipes and crack? I'd be happy to do it because that would give me the privilege of worshiping my God here. Something touched the communist official's heart. She, took, she looked up at him and said, Pastor, I'm not a godly woman. I'm just trying to fulfill work assignments, but I'll let you worship your God. So go and clean the sewer pipes. You should have seen the look on Milton's face He was, as he was telling the story. He admitted it was a very tough job, very dark, very stressful, but every day it was worth it. He said, I could worship my God in loyalty and truth. Yes. God was faithful. God has faithful people in every age. They are shining lights in a dark place. God wants you to, to empower. God wants to empower us to take our stand among those faithful people. Don't worry about the obstacles you may face. Don't worry about the challenges your commitment may bring. Milton Skustek was willing to serve God at any cost. 
and God took care of him, and he will take care of you too. Wouldn't you like to respond the divine invitation through the angels to come? Come out of her, my people. Don't you know? Do you, don't, you right, don't you right now want to become a part of God's church? Who will keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus? Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for the promise that you will empower my friends to live for you during the challenging times in life. Thank you, Lord, for your love. We chose to follow you. Bless, please bless everyone listening to this message and help all of us to experience the faith of Jesus. In his powerful name, we pray. Amen.